Okay, this is a quick overview of theoretical and experimental probability. And I'm going to do this by solving the problem of finding the probability that you get heads twice when you throw a coin twice. So I'm going to find the probability of two heads. Okay, so probability notation, you write P for probability, and then in brackets, you write the thing that you're finding the probability of happening. So if you're looking for the probability that a team wins a game, you would put P bracket win. And I'm going to do this both theoretically and experimentally. Okay, the theoretical probability is a fraction of the number of ways something can occur divided by the total things that can happen. There's an underlying assumption here that the various things that can happen are all equally likely. And sometimes that's the case and sometimes that's not the case. So the probability of two heads is equal to the number of ways that we could have two heads all divided by the number of ways we could throw two coins. Now, to understand what this means, this is uh, organized counting. They call this combinatorics. We're finding the number of ways you could have two heads. So let's consider that in isolation here. What's the number of ways you could have two heads? And that's when you throw two coins. We could have heads followed by tails. We could have heads followed by heads. We could have tails followed by heads. And we could have tails followed by tails. These are all of our possibilities. So the number of ways of throwing two coins, there are one, two, three, four of them. Out of all these, the number of ways that we have two heads, there's only one of them. That's this one right here. So that means our top number, the number of ways we could have two heads, well, when we look at all possibilities, there's only one. And the number of ways things could end up when we throw a coin twice, or throw two coins, there are four. Now, a perceptive person looking at this might think that's actually three because heads, tails, and tails, heads should count as the same thing. And it all depends on how the experiment is done. If you throw two coins, it's true we could have heads, tails, heads, heads, or tails, tails. That's three things that could happen. But we could also have tails, heads. And when the coins are different, it becomes a little more obvious. So these are Canadian coins. We could have, I could change tails to moose or beaver. And if I change the name in there, you'd clearly see that there are four possibilities, not just three. So heads, tails, and tails, head don't count as the same thing. So for theoretical probability, the probability of an event occurring is equal to the number of ways it could occur divided by the total number of events that could occur. This only works with an underlying assumption that all of the different ways things could happen are equally likely.
experimentally, the probability of two heads is equal to the number of successes divided by the number of trials. Now it's right in the name here, you have to actually do an experiment. So I'm going to flip two coins. I'm going to keep track of the number of times I'm successful, and we're going to assume successful is when we get two heads. And I'm going to divide that by the number of trials. That's the number of times that we flip two coins. So I'll set up a tally chart. So we have trial and we have success. And success is two heads. And each trial will consist of two coins. So this is trial one, and I've got tail tail, so I have one trial and I don't have any success. Trial two, I've got head heads, so I've got another trial and I've got one success. Trial three, I've got heads tails, so that's another trial but no success. Trial four, I've got tails tails, another trial, no success. Trial five, I've got heads tails, so that's another trial and no success. I'm gonna stop there because I think you get the point. How many trials do you do? The answer is the more the better. As I do more and more trials, I'm going to get a more accurate answer. As it worked out here, I've got one success in five trials. So the probability of getting two heads that I've just determined experimentally is one divided by five. They're not exactly the same. There's a neat thing in probability that we call the law of large numbers. And the law of large numbers is that if we do enough trials, this number will approach that number. I've got a bit more time here. Let's look at the multiplicative principle. And let's keep our familiar theme here, except I'm going to take away one of those coins. So I only have one coin. And I'm going to find the probability of two heads. Well, if I throw a coin once, see, the event of having two heads is the event of it coming out heads followed by the event that it comes out heads again. And the multiplicative principle is I can take the probability of this event occurring and multiply it by the probability of this event occurring. And that will give me the probability that they both occur. The probability that it comes up heads, remember, we're gonna look at the number of ways it could happen divided by the total number of things that could happen. And with just a single coin, we could have heads or tails. So the number of ways that it could be heads is one. And the total number of things that could possibly happen, we call it the sample space, is two.
we could have this or that occur. So with the multiplicative principle, I'm going to take this probability, which is 1 half. There's one way it could happen, divided by the two things that could happen. And I'm going to multiply it by the probability of that one occurring. And remember, when you're multiplying fractions, you multiply the tops together. Call them the numerators if you want to get fancy. 1 times 1, so we've got 1. And we multiply the bottoms together, or the denominators. That's 2 times 2, so we've got a 4 on the bottom. So using the multiplicative principle, I'm going to get the same probability as I did here when I drew out all possible cases. So yet a third way to approach the same problem. Notice that we have exactly the same answer if we use the multiplicative principle or if we draw out all possible events that could happen. We get a slightly different answer when we do experimental probability, but that's only because we didn't do all that many trials. If you do a lot more trials, the law of large numbers tells you that the theoretical probability and the experimental probability will end up being the same.